Today we present Development and Peace Caritas Canada's third symbol of solidarity for Share Lent. This headset represents the importance of the media in informing people about their rights and how to claim them. One of Development and Peace's partners in Honduras is ERIC, the Equipo de Reflexion, Investigation y Communication, the Reflection, Research and Communication Team in English. This Jesuit organization investigates violations of the human rights of the poor and the dispossessed. It helps communities defend territories that are being threatened by large-scale, profit-driven economic projects. It supports and accompanies those who are unjustly criminalized for defending their rights. ERIC also produces radio programs that promote freedom of expression and the right to information and provide reliable information on the problems that face local communities. Good morning. We welcome all parishioners and visitors as we prepare to celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. We will have a Lenten reconciliation service on Wednesday, March 22nd at 7 p.m. There will be several priests here to hear your confessions in a variety of languages. There will also be a diocesan day of reconciliation in every parish in the diocese on Saturday, March 25th from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. Our celebrant today is Father Rico. Please stand and join in our recessional hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather and begin this third week of Lent, 
At this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Albert D'Amico and Anselmo Rego. I invite all the special friends of Jesus to come forward for our children's liturgy. Come on down, friends. I know you all have big smiles this week. No school! <laughs> right? Best week ever other than end of June? Yeah. That's what I said, instead of the end of June, Colin? Yeah. He's one step ahead of me. You got a few months before that. Okay. Are we good? Okay, friends. Today we're going to hear about a very special time where there was a woman who went to a well, and Jesus had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her. Now, if somebody goes to a well, do you know why they would go to a well? Do you know what's in a well? What's at the bottom of a well? Who can tell me? Do you know? Leo. Water, that's right. So if somebody wants to drink water, they're what? I'm thinking of a T word. We said it in our first. Thirsty, that's right. So Jesus wants to help her, not just because she was thirsty, but he wanted to give her something bigger. So we're going to learn about what is that bigger thing that Jesus promised her, and he promises us, okay? So let's ask Jesus to bless us because we're all thirsting for him. May Almighty God bless you, friends, as you learn about his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's follow the leader here. Children go to hear God's word. Children go to hear good news. Children go with joy to hear God's word. Children go to hear good news. Today, friends, begins the first of the three scrutinies for those who are preparing to receive the sacraments this Easter. And so we welcome you, Tammy and Emily and Adrian, three of our four candidates as Jonathan is away, as you begin these last stages in preparation for the sacraments as we continue as the body of Christ to lift you in prayer, coming after the rite of election in which Bishop Burgi began this final stage in your preparation for being with us at the altar of God. Friends, for the times in which we have failed to recognize that only Jesus can quench our thirst, our thirst for life, our thirst for justice, our thirst for mercy. We bow our heads and ask for his mercy, for he is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are happy to free us from our sin by dying on the cross for us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the one who leads us to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in prayer, fasting, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In the wilderness, the people thirsted for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt? to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, 
because the children of Israel quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us enter his courts with thanksgiving and song. Let rejoice sing praises to the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Let us bow down and worship before him. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. He alone is our God, and we are the people that he shepherds, the flocks that he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we obtain access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. truly the savior of the world give me living water that i may never thirst praise to you lord jesus christ king of endless glory my brothers and sisters the lord be with you and with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, 
Ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria. Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his children and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but the one who drinks of the water that I will give will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, What do you want? Or, Why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he told them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you, and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages, and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you have said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory.
Sacred Scripture is full of so many beautiful phrases of not only the Lord Jesus, but our loving Father and Holy Spirit as God speaks to the silence of our hearts in the midst of our lives to bring us hope, healing, and mercy. And, <clears throat> sorry, I still cannot speak enough about how this encounter of Jesus and the woman at the well speaks to the one-on-one -on -one encounter we have with Jesus if we open ourselves up to see how many times we meet him at the well in our lives. It's not something that is once and then that's it. It is an ongoing encounter that the more we actually realize it, the more we see God moving in our midst. The more we pay attention, the more we hear the voice of Jesus, that gentle call. The more we see through the lens of Christ, the more apparent it is that God's fingerprints are all over my life in the good times and especially in the difficult times. This is the beauty of our faith. A God who approaches us, not a God who waits for us to approach Him. Every encounter we have with God is a response, not an initiation. God initiates. We respond. The woman's going about her life her daily routine. Every time I hear this passage, I think of my dear friend, Mother Lucy Magumba, the head of the Immaculate Heart Sisters of Africa for so many years. Now she's happy to remind me, I'm just sister again, you know, my brother. I said, you're always mother to me. You know, and how every day she has to go and get water for herself and her community, sometimes several times a day. And how she uses this as a time of great prayer she sees it as her journey with Jesus to Calvary. She sees this as an opportunity of grace. I said, Sister, I am so blessed that God put you in my life. This is an encounter with Jesus at the well. Every time somebody touches our lives in a profound way is an encounter with Jesus at the well. Every time you feel that God has touched your life, friends, it's an encounter with Jesus at the well. And every time you think you are alone, guess what it is? Jim, thank you. The, the rest were a little bit slow on their response. It's an encounter with Jesus at the wall. You know, she's oblivious to what's happening. This random Jewish man sitting at the well. Just move out of the way so I can do what I need to do. And sometimes that's how we live our lives too. We're so caught up in what we're doing that we fail to even realize the people around us because I'm dealing with my own drama. I'm dealing with my own dysfunction. Or I'm so caught up in my own joy that I'm blinded to everyone else. And God's like, hello, I'm right here. And so were your brothers and sisters, by the way. How many times does God remove the scales of blindness from our eyes? And yet it's in this beautiful, patient conversation that Jesus has with the woman. God is amazing. He pokes her and prods her. He invites her to kind of look at her life and say, like, you're just going through the motions. This is not God's intention for you. How many of us are just stuck going through the motions? What's my purpose in life? When am I ever going to be happy? When am I going to experience joy that I feel I deserve in this society of entitlement? <laughs> Where are we looking? Where are we looking? The encounter at the well talks about the thirst that is quenched by only God alone. You're dealing with grief, you don't do with God, good luck. You're celebrating a joy, a happy moment of your life, you're doing it without God, it's going to fade. The more we realize God moving in our life, 
the more we encounter him at the well, the more blessed we feel, the more aware we become, and then our life is changed, just like the woman. She goes back to her community, but she's different. This man told me everything about my life. How does he know this? You ever had an experience with God where you felt him so strongly where everyone else seemed to get it wrong? Like you, you look to yourself and you say, Lord, like I can always count on you. Last night I had the privilege of being with, I have 43 first cousins. I was with one of my cousins, so I won't name him because I didn't ask his permission. And uh, we were walking to the Leaf game last night to watch my Leafs beat up on the Oilers. <laughs> and he said to me, he said, Padre, he said, uh, you know, every time I'm with you, you always seem happy. I said, well, thank you. I'm not always happy, but around you I am. He said, you like your life as a priest? I said, oh, what a great question. I said, the scriptures fit your question so perfectly this weekend. I almost said his name. And so then as we were talking, it was like the road to Emmaus. And I was starting to talk to him about how God continues to reward me in little ways. That before I entered the seminary, I probably wouldn't have paid attention to. But because I was blessed to have an experience where God slowed down my life so I could realize how much he's in it, then I started to get it. This hard-headed Italian started to figure it out that the control freak that I am, the more I tried to control my life, the more I lost control. The more I let God look after things and to trust he's going to be there, the more he is. Rico, do you trust me? I'm trying, Lord. I'm like at 80%. You know, I pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet every day. Jesus, I trust in you. Do you really, Rico? Well, I'm trying, Lord. I don't. Well, why not? It's like the people of Israel in the first reading. They forgot what it was like to be under Pharaoh's reign. Oh, you brought us out to the desert to die of thirst? Does this sound like anyone you know? When we challenge God, where are you? Give me a sign. Do you exist? Do you love me? Who are we talking to here? We can't talk to God like that. Who do we think we are? I'm the king of kings and you're talking to me like I abandon you? Let's roll back your life a little bit, <laughs> right? God has so many reasons to abandon us. He never does. God has so many reasons to stop talking to us. He never does. The woman at the well is so caught up in social divisions and expectations Etc., etc. Jesus could have said, You know what? I'm going to have this chat with the next person who comes to do well. That's not how God is. God is patient. This constant drawing of Himself to us, especially in the season of Lent, is our wake up call at the well. In this dialogue and this renewed commitment to prayer that I pray we are all experiencing is a reminder that God has our best interest in mind. If he's going to bring us to something, he's going to see us through it. We need to question less and trust more. We need to realize that when God unpacks one aspect of our life, it's a mere sign to us of his movement, my brothers and sisters, of his desire to speak to that thirst in our hearts that no one else can get to. Sometimes it's because we build our own walls. We don't even disclose what our inner needs are. At other times, we are unaware of what our real needs are, like the woman at the well. Jesus goes much deeper. She's thinking surface level. God is saying, no, 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 no. You need to be here. This is where I'm attacking. This is the aspect of your life that you need to address. The woman is spiraling relationship after relationship and man after man. This is not of God. Jesus is asking her to change her life and he's doing the same thing to us, especially when we are spiraling and we avoid and we push God away 
I don't want to go there, Lord. Well, we need to go there. Why? Because God likes to see us suffer. Because God likes to see us squirm and in pain. Is that the God you worship? It's not the God I worship. God doesn't enjoy Rico in pain. God enjoys me being dependent on him so he can lift me up. And that's the same for you, friends, whether you realize it or not. The woman at the well is the experience of our daily lives. (coughs) This cough. Excuse me. So, what are you thirsting for right now? What's the area of your life, my brothers and sisters, that you continue to deal with and struggle with? What is this experience that God is trying to talk to you about? How is God moving you, whether you are willing or unwilling, whether you are kicking and screaming or just pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, because it doesn't make me feel good? That's what we need to address. This week, as you read chapter 4 of Paschal Mystery, Bishop Barron is going to ask us to enter in. And in our dialogue tomorrow night, as we continue to be vulnerable with one another at our discussion group, that's what helps us. That the woman drew others to come to know Jesus. And at first they believed her. But then what does the end of the gospel say? It's now no longer because of what you said. It's because we've experienced it for ourselves. That's what faith is about. We first need people to draw us to Jesus. But then to go deeper, it needs to be this personal experience. So I shared with my cousin last night, I invited him to go deeper. And by the way, friends, I'm still in the shallow end. I need to go deeper because God is an ocean, not a swimming pool. There's no end. You think you figured him out? You haven't even started. (laughs) I haven't even started. Let's go deep. Not in the well, but in the ocean of coming to know who God is. Let's continue to draw others to him too. Others that are spiraling. Others that are struggling. Others that continue to want to be at surface level that we know need to go deep. Let's bring them to Jesus Christ. Don't bring them to Dr. Phil. Don't bring them to the self-help book. Bring them to Jesus Christ. Because he is the one who satisfies our thirst. Let us pray for one another. Let us ask God to help us to go deeper because you're encountering him at the well right now through my words. They're not my words, they're his. I'm just an instrument. Let us also be instruments for one another so that this experience will be shared by all people. Because indeed, the woman was changed. Please God, we will be changed. Please God, the world will be changed. Amen. Friends, I now invite our three candidates who are preparing for the sacraments along with your sponsors and the RCIA team to please come forward as we begin this first scrutiny. What Bishop Burgi has begun in the rite of election, my dear brothers and sisters, is preparing you for the final stages as you anticipate the coming of Jesus like the woman at the well in today's gospel, as you are preparing for baptism, confirmation, and the reception of Holy Communion to become full members of the church, this first scrutiny is one of the final stages to prepare your hearts for the coming of Jesus. And so we, as a faith community, lift you in prayer. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Let us pray for these elect, Emily, Adrian, Tammy, and Jonathan, who cannot be with us today, whom the church has confidently chosen, that they may successfully complete their long preparation, and at the Paschal Feast of Easter may find Jesus in his sacraments. And so our response is, 
Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that they may ponder on the word of God in their hearts and savor its meaning more fully day by day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that they may learn to know Jesus who came to save what was lost, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may humbly confess themselves to be sinners in need of God's mercy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that they may sincerely reject everything in their lives that is displeasing and contrary to Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit, who searches every heart, may help them to overcome their weakness through his power, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that the same Spirit may teach them to know the things of God and how to please him, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that their families also may put their hope in Christ and find peace and holiness in him, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that we ourselves, in preparation for the Easter feast, may seek a change of heart, give ourselves to prayer, and persevere in good works, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that throughout the whole world, whatever is weak may be strengthened, whatever is broken, restored, whatever is lost is then found, and what is found becomes redeemed, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear candidates, bow your heads and ask for God's blessing. God of power, you send your Son to be our Savior. Grant that these catechumens, who, like the woman of Samaria, thirst for living water, may turn to the Lord as they hear his word and acknowledge their sins and weaknesses that weigh us down. Protect them from vain reliance on self and defend them from the power of Satan. Free them from the spirit of deceit so that admitting the wrong they have done, they may attain purity of heart and advance on the way of salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the fountain for which they thirst. You are the master whom they seek. In your presence, they dare not claim to be without sin, for you alone are the Holy One of God. <coughs> they open their hearts to you in faith. They confess their faults and lay bare their hidden wounds. In your love, free them from their infirmities. Heal their, heal their sickness quench their thirst, and give them peace. In the power of your name, which we call upon in faith, stand by them now and heal them. Rule over the spirit of evil, conquered by your rising from the dead. Show your elect the way of salvation in the Holy Spirit, that they may come to worship the Father in truth, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, although you cannot yet participate fully in the Lord's Eucharist, stay with us as a sign of our hope that all God's children will eat and drink with the Lord and work with his Holy Spirit to recreate the face of the earth. Thanks be to God. As a sign of our continued commitment and prayer for our sisters here present and our brother not present, let us greet them with a round of applause. Let us join in our offertory
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with the grace and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks and with all the angels, we praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. At this Mass, we use Eucharistic prayer for reconciliation number one. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth 
to become the lasting sign of your covenant. He desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus, mercy. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are a faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the entire human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, our husband, with Moses and Saint Paul, St. Catherine of Alexandria, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with their deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but he Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those at home receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
as we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high. We humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Good Saint Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family, protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. Keep us one and all under your continual protection so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life, die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. Friends in RCIA, we continue to lift you in prayer. As I said in these final stages, they will be receiving the next two scrutinies at the other uh, weekend masses, so you, the people of God, know who you're praying for. Continue to pray for them as we look forward to the Easter Vigil to receive you at the altar of God for the first time through baptism and uh, for Jonathan and then the three of you, confirmation and Eucharist. Friends, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday is our night of reconciliation where I've invited my brother priest to join me as well as next Saturday, the diocesan day for reconciliation. I strongly suggest that you come next Wednesday night when I have 10 priests here as opposed to when it's myself alone in the confessional and Father Bill as well, okay? Make confession a priority for friends. The mercy of God is deeper than the ocean, and he wants you to embark in his mercy. All of us are called to reconciliation. Also, tomorrow night, as I mentioned, will be our next discussion session on the Paschal Mystery as you begin Bishop Barron's fourth chapter on uh, the week's scriptures, which I know will continue to move our hearts just as they have at this Mass. And I pray that your Lenten calendars have been helping you each day to grow in your relationship with God. Continue to use them not as wallpaper, but as a means of growing in faith. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Our Lenten journey continues. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Thanks God's love is warmer than the warmest sunshine, softer than a sigh. God's love is deeper than the deepest ocean, wider than the sky. God's love is brighter than the brightest star that shines every night above. There is nothing in this world can ever change God's love. Something happened to my heart the day that I met you. Something that I've never felt before. You are always on my mind no matter what I do. Every day it seems God's love is warmer than the warmest sunshine, softer than the sun. God's love is deeper than the deepest ocean, wider than the sky. God's love is brighter than the brightest star that shines every night above. There is nothing in this world that can ever change God's love. Once I thought God's love was meant for anyone. I thought he'd never come my way Now it only goes to show how wrong we all can be For now I have to
to tell you every day. God's love is warmer than the warmest sunshine, softer than the sky. God's love is deeper than the deepest ocean, wider than the sky. God's love is brighter than the brightest star that shines every night above. There is nothing in this world that could ever change God's love. God's love is warmer than the warmest sunshine, softer than the sky. God's love is deeper than the deepest ocean, wider than the sky. God's love is brighter than the brightest star that shines every night above. There is nothing in this world that could ever